much left. Well, there is at the top. There's some stuff that I did that it doesn't match exactly. But this is line for line Linux code now. ATA tag voice. What is dprintk? Is this a kernel? Some sort of. Uh, it's dprintk device printk. I'm not familiar with this. So it's Linux macro name. Yes, Linux. Okay. Yeah. There it is. That's what it does. It does these strange calls into printk, which is print kernel. I don't know. I let them do what they want to do, and then I implemented printk. <laughs> the rest of it, they're covered. So <laughs> left it alone, right? So as you're porting, you kind of have to decide how far you want to go. Do you want to implement the whole kernel, or just this much of the kernel? Right? <laughs> Bearing in mind, somebody's already written a kernel for your target machine. Yeah. Yes, if you, it already runs on your hardware. You question your purpose in life. Don't go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> that only leads to heartache. <laughs> it goes on and 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 on You see, that's a lot. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, this stuff at the bottom, that's me. I haven't moved this code yet. A couple scuzzy miscellaneous functions. Do this, do that. <laughs> but uh, what I want to do is I want to update from a current baseline to the 4.3 baseline, I think it is. What's Linux on? 4.5? Well, that's a kernel thing, it's not libata. But it, it follows. Oh, it does follow. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. It's all the same version number. So when I check out the Linux oh, code. Oh, God, that's right. In, in the Linux where all this crap is all thrown into the kernels. Because Everything. None kernels. of this is, this isn't user space. Stuff. No. It's all kernel space. Yeah. Oh, my God. Unless you use. Why was it? Well, that has got to be the most bizarre design decision. Why would somebody create? I mean, I understand the concept <coughs> of a monolithic kernel. Yep. In the 1980s, when you're running on a small box and, and performance is important. Like it. But today, <laughs> that's got to be just a bear to manage. It is. Mm -hmm. You should see the config switches. It's frightening. I mean, I, I try to keep track of like, <laughs> a lot of the mailing list traffic. Yeah, you, you change the color of the LED on the front of your box, you've got to re recompile the whole kernel. Yep. Whole kernel. Nothing but the kernel. <laughs> So we got all sorts of interesting stuff in here. Spin lock. That was there a, you that go. Was a, uh, there's my spin lock. <coughs> That's <coughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you Good. go. Yeah. Well done. Very, very useful. Very terse. Yeah. <laughs> does a lot. Yep. Yeah. S single core machine. <laughs> That's what a spin lock does. Don't need to <laughs> That was that was the uh, <laughs> finest hour. <laughs> of course, now with with the the, the multi core coming any moment. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> you mean I got to go in and uh, change that? Now? See, the nice thing is, it's in one place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, spin locks. That was pretty easy. I should actually add that to my Lyle Hazelwood thing. Lyle Hazelwood's name. The <laughs> same Lyle. The same Lyle Hazelwood spells spin locks instantly. <laughs> <laughs> that would that, that's gold. Yeah. Would you put that in the next? I like that. The DMA engine was interesting because you know Linux has its own way of handling DMA. I don't know how it does. I am. So I followed the functions because that's what I did. Right? Right. I followed the functions, and I stopped at this point where it does DMA map scat scatter gather. That's what that stands for. Okay. And I implemented my own. Oh, excuse me. Is it, do you have the C code for this? Yes, of course. <laughs> I have to find it though. <laughs> Where did I put it? Sounds like a kernel thing. Oh. Once you get used to the code, you, you kind of know where to look for it. You work with you know, anything long enough, you start to learn it. Mm -hmm. So this is our implementation. Look at this, start DMA, get DMA list. 
Yeah, see, it's pretty easy to me. It is. Thankfully, our kernel has DME scatter gather built in. Gee, why can't we do this sort of stuff for PCIe? Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's that's apples and oranges, but I mean, um, yeah, that's actually really surprising. That's it. Most of it's print statements. Oh, that's pretty cool. It doesn't do hardly anything. So the kernel's actually going to set all this stuff up for you, basically. Yeah. That's very nice. I just give it the start address, the length, and then some flags. Away it goes. Right. I just had to translate Linux talk to Amiga talk. Right. And back again. For the uh, error messages and such. Like DMF read from RAM. Like what is the, uh, is there a particular reason for what HW entries? The, uh, what is the mnemonic? NHW? H HW is hardware. Okay. N? Number, hard number. number entries. Okay. Yeah. That's Linux term. Okay. <laughs> okay. I tried not to touch it if it right. didn't need to be touched. It's cool or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, try to keep it close so that the next guy comes along will have a chance to take the Linux code, maybe merge it up or do something else with it. The next guy? Yeah. Yeah. Could be you. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Where else was I? Uh, I want to show some other stuff here. Atomic. Ooh, there we go. I still haven't done that. Oh, what a bear. So I cheated in Atomic. I really cheated. What have you done here? What have I done? Yeah, that's what I said too. No, seriously, what, 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 is this, what does the C code do here? What is, what is this? Hold on. Hold on. Atomic, Where's atomic ink return increment? That was E, though. You Disable and enable. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cool. Sometimes, sometimes, when you're porting, you take a cheat. <laughs> I thought, uh, <laughs> I thought the reasons didn't want us using that stuff anymore. Pshaw. <laughs> okay. I found out this uh, atomic function was called like three times. So again, it's um, effort versus result. Reward. Yeah. Your reward. Yeah. Effort reward. Yeah. So I went. Ah, I'll go back to that later and do a right, the correct one, maybe, because Linux has this wonderful set of header files. Still gives me a headache. Uh, that will distill it down to an atomic operation in your particular PowerPC chip. Okay. And it will use the correct barriers. Mm -hmm. And it will do it the correct way. And taking into account all the errata, if there is any. But it's a set of header files, which are called other header files, which have macros upon macros upon macros. It just, wow. It was intense, all to get like three instructions. <laughs> well, what were the instructions? Like on this particular CPU, yeah, it was like three things. You had to do something, something, sync, or whatever the barrier Mark was. stuck in sync? Do you have to do the reservation option? There's some strange, okay. uh, sorry, I don't remember what the instruction was. You would, you would know from seeing it. Of course. I saw the mnemonic. Yeah, the mnemonic, you would know what it is. Yeah. It wasn't much. There's a lot of ugly, there, there's plenty of ugly ops on, on, the, on the power. It, it distilled down to not much, but uh, somebody who's familiar with this chip probably would just type it in. It's just this. <laughs> oh, sure. But I didn't like to waste time looking it up, figuring it out, testing it. So I just need to say, disable enable, which is worse than forbid and permit. It's a pretty, pretty big hammer. Got it done. Shut it up. Now, if this was called a lot, I wouldn't have done that. But this is called once during port seven. Oh yeah, once. So when you probe, calls this, and then I probe the other port, calls this, never calls again. Well, that's okay. When they, <laughs> <laughs> just, 
part. No, seriously, because the, so like, why bother? Right? The the way anything that I've ever heard about them doing multi-core for, it's not like they're actually going to uh, instantiate any. There's only going to be one core that's going to be doing all the OS function anyway. So what difference does it make? It doesn't. Oh, not a not a special. Oh, sure. So sometimes you cheat. If there's any constellation, I've done that a lot. Yeah, evil 16-bit <laughs> timers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I even took address four. Look at me. See that? See that wonderful typecast hell there? What in the world did you do? What is that? <laughs> it's a pointer to a. That's my gun. <laughs> See the smoke? <laughs> Are you grabbing a pointer to something inside the library? What? What, what is that? Pointed to the wait, library. It's wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pointed to what? Yeah, I'll point it to the exec interface. See, address zero is no pointer reserved. Right. Right. Address four is always exec Oh. That's handy. Yes. That's why you define K printf or whatever you call it but as being <laughs> the three line string. So yeah. It just takes that and uh, resolves by yeah. exec dot debug f out of it. Yep. Very evil. Like this is a, this is stuff you shouldn't normally do, but sometimes you just want to get it done. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, slam it in there. Because I'm a device driver. When in doubt, use force. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that was an interesting uh, little. Include. There's more. See all these tricks are uh, stuff I discovered along the way, right? I needed this. I needed that. Jiffies. The jiffies. You know about the jiffies, right? What? Did, no. No. Oh. The jiffies. What are jiffies? Some Amiga programmer. It's the jiffies. No, seriously. What, what, what is it? <laughs> the type of peanut butter. Is it a unit of time? Jiffy, yes. Six. <laughs> One fiftieth or sixtieth of a second. Maybe it's in time. Right. There it is. The Jiffy. <laughs> I found out I needed, this driver needed a lot of precise timing. Mm -hmm. And it did it using some fancy schmancy clock math. <laughs> So I had to make that work on Amiga, right? So I used read e clock. So to make my Jiffy's work. A Jiffy is ten milliseconds. And is it on this Wait. one? Jiffy's per second. One hundred. Yeah, one hundred right. hertz. Oh, hertz. Hertz. Oh, okay. hertz. I thought it varied. I thought it was varying whether or not it's NTSC or PAL. Well, that's the Amiga version of Jiffy. Oh. Wait, what are we running this This is on? Linux. Oh, oh right. you're talking about Linux. This is Linux. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Because the driver has all sorts of points where it wants to calculate time and do polling and dance around. I thought, well, I may as well implement that piece of the kernel too. So I took the Linux kernel functions and toss, <laughs> put in mine, <laughs> and away you go, right? This is the stuff sometimes you have to do. Oh, hence the new license. New license? Uh, he's got that at the top of all his... Uh, oh, yes. Oh, that license. Okay. Yes. I don't know what you referred to. <laughs> <laughs> Any new source code? Yes. I have the implied warranty of merchantability or fitness for particular purpose. May only cause minimal payouts. <laughs> Only for use in minimal viable <laughs> <laughs> It's only suitable for a minimal viable product. What a guy. Sorry. <laughs> you see, there's another interface that you have to decide, well, should I just use Amiga functions or should I, you know, do this? So I just put a wrapper on it. Well, given how complex timer dot device is, this makes more sense. <laughs> now, read e clock. That's really simple. You get this E clock bell back. That was easy to use. 
So you go now, now EV high, EV low, so it actually was 32-bit interface to a 64-bit value. Right. Yeah. So I just converted it to a Jiffy. <laughs> Made the Linux driver happy. And eClock's guaranteed to increase, no matter what you're doing with your user clock. It's like entropy. Yes. yes. It'll eventually consume you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a warm, fuzzy feeling. That's the medication talking. <laughs> so that, that's one thing, time. There was this other a API I ran into called completions. It's a Linux concept, Linux service. Ooh, that's a nice heavy duty piece of code there. This was interesting. So there's this thing called uh, wait for completion timeout. So a completion is like, um, like a future in C++? Futures? Uh, what's another word? Is that when you bet on whether or not your program compiles? It's a point in the future that you all rendezvous to. It's a thing. You rendezvous to this point in the future. You're all, it's like a semaphore, maybe. Okay. Like you're all wait for this to happen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In time. So there's a time limit. Eventually it'll run out. Where did I put my completions? Shed me. Yes. Okay. This was nasty. So what I did was I, I Googled around for a while trying to figure out what this was. And from the text description, figure out how to do it in Amiga land. Unfortunately, I know how to do these little exact weight loops because I've been doing them a long, long time. Would have been harder to do if you didn't know this trick about you. You send a timer command, tr add request for so many seconds, so many microseconds, and then you wait on those. And this happens, you do this, that happens, that. Oh, so it's great fun, great fun. So basically, what it's doing is it's executing something. But if it takes too long, it wants to be interrupted and stopped. Okay. That's what it's kind of doing. So what I do to interrupt it and stop is I send a signal to my task. Does that so mean that it'll, that it'll be restarted or? It means give up oh, on so that operation. So it's just some sort of forward progress uh, mechanism. Yeah. So I issue, um, say, a QC, uh, oh, sorry, uh, a command, N uh, NCQ command to the device. I'm only going to allow that so many uh, milliseconds to come back. And if it doesn't come back in this many milliseconds, forget it, it's done. Okay. We quit. We try again, we do something intelligent, right? We erase the hard drive, whatever. That's also good. <laughs> but I had to implement that to send even the most basic command to the device, as it was assumed to be there as a service in the kernel, which isn't in our kernel. But you can usually shoehorn one OS into another <laughs> okay. with enough force. <laughs> or it's enough hammer. <laughs> to say somebody has implemented some to interrupt timeout in the device driver at last. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's been done a million, million times. You know, timeouts and interrupts. And oh, sure, but yeah. Okay. This must be the first one in the Mega Man, is it? Is it not? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Because <laughs> I just did it the Linux way. I've seen similar patterns in the IDE driver, but not exactly the same. Not exactly the same. No. Similar pattern. Wow. And, oh, and y yes, if you're familiar with the ID driver, it has this habit of busy looping on error. Yeah. Busy looping at priority. This does not busy loop on error, right? Busy looping at priority 10. Yes, okay. and I think I run at 10 too. Or 10 as well. It's confusing. I run at 10 as well. So in this case, on error, it just gives up. Yeah, it gives so many milliseconds. The, the, and the milliseconds are defined by the libata library which is defined by that SATA FSL.C. So you can see the driver says 
thou shalt take this much time. And mm -hmm. Someone else picked that number. See, I don't have to worry about that aspect. I just have to. You don't dump anything out in the material that something timed out or went bad no, or it's not, didn't respond? Not for me to decide. That's LibATA's problem. See, ah, okay. It's the responsibility of LibATA to do something intelligent after time limits. Mm -hmm. And it does a lot of stuff. Oh. Actually, I, I could probably show you how much it does. Uh, maybe it's in lid? No. Where is it? Internal driver? No, drivers. Okay. Ah, there they are. So, what's the core? The core is huge. 151K. The error handling, 107K. <laughs> Just source code. <laughs> to get the job done is this. To handle errors. <laughs> Just phenomenal amount. Extraordinary. Complexity. <laughs> and that's the part I wanted to avoid. <laughs> the error handling. Your, your junior programmers will usually do that, no problem. They'll do the core. But they couldn't handle an error to save their life. <laughs> so many different scenarios that you have to handle for so many different devices. Oh, it's just crazy. I still have trouble understanding quite a bit of it because it's just so deep. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? This was written by. Tejun Yu, smart fella. Neat yeah. game. Yeah. Look at that. You got timeouts. See, there's your timeouts. See, greater than 99% working drives spin up before 20 seconds. Like all these little tricks that they discovered the hard way. Right? Well, yeah. physical limitations of the original hardware. Yeah. Yeah, cover. cover is greater than 99%, but not 100, right? So you got all these, uh, be generous with flush. Ooh. For <laughs> true it is. goes on and on and on. Look at all the timeouts for the different kind of devices. Each command can have different timeout templates. Ooh. Well, I mean, that actually does make sense. It does, but the complexity. Mm, hurts. And it's got this stack implementation they did. And, uh, it just, it, 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 it. Then sometimes you'll find in my in the code I do this. If zero and if means does nothing. I haven't finished that part yet. <laughs> right here. Or right here, this function. Acquire and release. It's supposed to play with the mutex. I went, nah. <laughs> I don't need this. <laughs> what does it do? It acquires ownership for whatever it is. It's, it's playing with this thing called exception handler owner. See, in, in Linux, I found out the exception handling is a separate thread from the main driver. It's an independent thread that runs all the time in the background. Mm -hmm. In Linux, in my driver, it's part of the main thread. I made a command decision and went, "No, I don't want to do it that way." <laughs> Exception <laughs> handling meaning just handling of errors, or yes, yes. If errors happen that often. Yes, they require a task to be just ask. There. But sorry, no errors happen constantly, but it's not. <laughs> it's not a joke, and it's not just. It's most I/O devices. Mm -hmm. Like fiber and so forth, you get errors constantly. Mm -hmm. And instead of you know trying to isolate or fix it, it just makes more sense to retry because it's seriously. Mm. You trust it now? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, IO hardware has to be really, really intelligent. Really intelligent. I mean, you're, you're, we're getting to the point now. On, on the mainframe side and probably also in the cloud world where you actually have advanced analytics to try to determine exactly where the error was, was, was the error in the transceiver, was the error in the, the port, was it in the cable, was it in the repeater, mm -hmm. it was, 
you know, it's not like there's a drive hooked up yeah. local to your boss yeah, across yeah. the floor or across the country. I mean, it's. Mm -hmm. Remember when Bill was copying files back and forth, like these gigabyte files? Back and forth, and he always said, there was one error. Because I wasn't done the error handling framework yet, right? <laughs> I could do nothing. I don't think I even replied to his email. <laughs> Late. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, bud. It's gone now. <laughs> but it'd be one in, a, in, in, a, in 10 gigabytes, right? Well, sorry. And that seems like that. That seems like well, it's not very often, but actually, that's well, that's often. That's a lot. Yeah. So you have to handle these types of things, and depending on the device, and depending and on just the, retry the the copy of that piece or whatever. Well, this driver, yeah, it'll actually redo that transaction. It will. That one little piece, right? And the the but nice thing is, I don't really know about it as as an Amiga driver. It just I don't know, the framework did something. I got my bite, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so complex, it has its own thread. It's like, oh. But Linux is designed for servers mm -hmm. of fairly large size, right? Yeah. I'm kind of dumbing it down a bit. Yeah. And in big boy machines, we don't just have threads that handle this, we have whole processors that handle this. Error process. Yeah, basically. Error handling process. Yeah, because the way it works in the mainframe, right? Anytime you have an I.O. request, that spawns a specific program on an I.O. processor just for that request. And he sits yeah, and he sits around there and he handles it and loves it and cares for it and communicates <laughs> back to the I three ninety code who yeah. communicates the operating system, which communicates with your queue manager, which communicate right, all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. All to make certain that your money does not disappear from your bank account. Which I all in all, that. is you know a good use of engineering. <laughs> what bank account? What money? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I wonder if there's an error. Does the error ha er exception handler actually do some things? Maybe in your context, you know, like do the transaction twice to make sure that okay, it failed once. Make sure it goes through twice, and the you results do twice match. Twice so you have redundancy on the... No, the transaction doesn't complete until every aspect of it is successful. Right. Yeah. It's atomic. It's just, yeah. yeah, and if, if it wasn't successful, then nothing got committed. Yeah. Right? You have, uh, you have, you have a multi-step com data commit process yeah. on systems like that. But that's not this. But the, even so, it actually makes me feel very comfortable that there's actually a little task sitting out there that knows he's got plenty of CPU time and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. The way he goes. It's good. That's intelligent. That's good. <laughs> you see that more stuff commented out. So, so in the Amiga context, do you actually have an error handler task? No. Okay. No. I, I have uh, I run on the port task instead. Okay. okay. See, in Linux world, the, the command would be run on the task of the caller because they don't transfer it to another task. Okay. They just run on the caller. So they're in the context of the caller. They got the fastest way. Gotcha. Right. So I made that decision at the beginning to have one task per port. Okay. See, so basically I did the same thing, but now I have two error handlers. Mm -hmm. Independent. Even better. Even better. Yeah. Unless they start talking to each other. Or starve each other. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank goodness it, it, they don't talk to each other, but <laughs> that would have wrecked my plan. But these are the things you kind of discover as you're porting unless you are really good at analyzing documentation and you picked it out somehow. And <laughs> well, they came to the same conclusion on how to handle it. Yes. Yes, yes. See, there's your ATA SCSI command error handler. There's that uh, SFF. That's interesting. Is this acronym? I don't know what it stands for now. Um, that's the old way of talking to IDE devices. Slow file system. Slow file system? No. It might be. <laughs> it was a terrible, terrible thing it was back then. Uh, now we use NCQ, but uh, the old IDE drivers still use that. Those SII, this and that that we have. They use hammering these drivers, these, these registers, and reading back, and getting all these strange answers, <laughs> trying to interpret them. <laughs> Instead of using NCQ. 
<laughs> I was kind of hoping to backport the uh, A1000 driver to use this one. Oh, the SB600 SAT driver? Yeah, SB600. Maybe make this one work, because mm -hmm. this one should be faster. I'd like to test that theory. So <laughs> that's another thing we could do. Right? A lot of performance we're leaving on the floor with the X5000 yeah. at the moment. Not necessarily because with this driver, but we could fix up the X1000. It's still not at max speed at all. No, not at all. Maybe like eight DMA channels. There's a nothing. lot of grunt there on yeah. the other side. You guys could be working with. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot a lot of, of memory. Up. There's a lot of memory bandwidth you're throwing away on the X5000. I see these notes from Thomas. He's saying, "Oh, the memory is slow on this machine." No, maybe slow on OS4, but it's not slow. Shouldn't be. No, not at all. Look at all that code. Oh, it's it just goes on and on and on. One cost as it is. So. And once in a while, you see my code commented out. What? <laughs> I love how you do this if zero stuff. That's Same my processor. That's my favorite way. That's the best. If zero, if one, if zero. Oh, I see what you've done here. So basically, what you've done is is that okay? I got it. So you say I don't need it, and then you print out if in fact somebody actually tried to call it. Yes. Smart. Yes. And then you know. Oh, oh I didn't really need that. <laughs> so when the machine dies and somebody sends you the serial log, oh, I guess we did need it. It's getting out of the yep. serial log. Yeah, the people will take. Just don't tell the beta testers. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Oh, I did need that. <laughs> I'm going to use if diff, uh, if zero. I'll use if diff unused. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes your brain remember. gets mixed up and you can't remember which is which. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you use it, if zero, it, it still compiles it all, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if zero means skip that. If one means yeah, it is. It, it means compile all the code. Oh, it is, no, it's hash if, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's, another. <laughs> it's not there. It's visible. The compiler can't see it. The preprocessor knows it's there. <laughs> so I'm trying to make this file as close as possible to the Linux source file I stole it from, right? So that I can do a merge later. Oh, there's an async notification. I found out I didn't need this at all. Wow. This was to support um, disk in and out. That obviously works. So I didn't need it, right? I thought I needed it. And it's like, oh, well, if I don't have to do all this code. Now, some, sometime I may need it for a hot plug, though. So we'll see. But, uh, Is that still something that you want to eventually do? or? Yeah, Paul says I have to. Well, Paul, Paul has laundry lists of things that have to get done. <laughs> He's been yelling at me for months. Where's my hot plug? Where's my hot plug? <laughs> <laughs> Got my hot plug done yet? <laughs> why am it's I not that high on the list. Why am I giving you money? I do it. I'll back to you. I like this, this function, right? <laughs> this, this is a good one. See this one? Not a. Yep. Yeah. That isn't even me. That's, that's Linux. That's outstanding. That's Linux. That's outstanding. They put not a. That's all you get. <laughs> it's one of those, you know, they put that in there just so that it doesn't crash. It compiles with that there. It likes it. You had to do some work. Yeah. You didn't have to put on the used Nope. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they did that. So it goes, well, where am I? I'm not even halfway down on the file. It's on, 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 on. I'll skip a bunch. Oh, what was that? Do a nice table. Oh, the error district. Hey, the secret decoder ring. This is a decoder ring. Oh, I didn't show you the blacklist. Oh, of devices that are yeah. just borked. Blacklist. <laughs> 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 Thou shalt not use blacklist. Don't I, though? He does. I kept, huh? kept saying, oh, it's not me, it's the blacklist. <laughs> <laughs> you would never use USB on your computer ever. But look at all the ATA commands there are. It's like, I got it. 
thought it was bad on the, on the Amiga command list. He has terabytes. This goes on and on. on. <laughs> I swear these standards guys, they just add commands just to make themselves seem smarter. <laughs> uh, there's your error codes. This will be on the next. Data this, com that. Cool. System. Device exchange. Yeah, CRC. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. CRC errors. Dev XCHO. Yeah. Is it X oh, no, that's exchange, exchange, right? Ah, uh, uh, device exchange. And the update. <laughs> <laughs> on and 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 on Yep. Lovely, hey? No. It's very that's nice. You didn't have to do too much. Text. That's how you handle errors. <laughs> and there's the core. Where's that blacklist? Of course, it's not at the top of the file. That would be nice. They put it somewhere in the middle. Oh, there it is. They call it porkage. Wow. Porkage! <laughs> so there's all the list of broken devices. If you have one of these, throw it away. <laughs> I wonder how many of these I have in the house. Oh, Lord. Can we get a list of these? Yeah, yeah it's right, right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Zing! <laughs> all right. You like the fun of it. And the thing is, that the driver will adapt to it. It'll just slow it down or turn off some feature or whatever, right? Just to make it seem like it works. Yeah, that's not that's the first page. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Quantum fireball, really? That, 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 that sounds that? painful. Please don't shoot a quantum fireball. <laughs> These are really old drives. It's got and, everything. And they were they were standards in, in the in the toaster flyer days. We we uh, yeah. we live by those. Like you, you people hear some still, people say Seagate's the best or Western Digital. Well, there's kind of a mix of both in here. <laughs> had nothing to do with the the best. It was the ones you could afford at the time you needed them. I like, <laughs> I like this one. Maybe we should just blacklist TST core. <laughs> Completely. The whole thing. What else you got in there? Yep. And this is an older version of the kernel, too. They've added more since. More. Yeah. yeah, there's some more. <laughs> Intel SSDs. Samsung SSD. All of them. Oh. Bugger. They're all broken. Well, I've got the Samsung SSD in my X5K. <laughs> so what is this doing? Zero after trim? Something to do with their trim support. Oh, I don't really right. care about that. Yeah. Oh, the SSDs? Yeah. yeah those, those, those things will die anyway without trim. It's, it's not going to. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, yeah. 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 The right cycle is limited. We know it. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Those are the SATA one drives. They were, they were no good. They had troubles. So I'm actually thinking about downloading the Tarvo for a little bit of just to get this. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the things I do right away uh, whenever someone reports a bug Are you gonna look with a device on a beta list. Right? They say, my blah blah mouse doesn't work. Go look at the Linux kernel, the BSD kernel. Check their blacklist. Right. It's amazing how much stuff in like the consumer space that's terabyte. got problems that they don't recall. Yeah, yeah. they don't recall them, no. They just, yeah. How's that legal? Well, in the Git mud from the PC world, they ship it with a driver. Yeah. The driver works around it, and as long as they get it to work to some reasonable degree, yeah. and thought of a minimal viable product with minimal, minimal data loss, yeah. and then they're mm -hmm. done. Yeah. 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 And then they never release a um, fix. So our driver will spit something out on the serial port. Oh, it'll say this thing's been like Yeah, it'll say parkage, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, okay. yeah, that's good. It does. So if you don't see anything on the, on the uh, serial port, this is at boot time, then you're OK. You're okay. Got some boot logs around here. It's time to go take a look. It's a good time to start looking at your yeah. boot logs. Got <laughs> 
when you become a beta tester. How much are we paying him? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> the minimum viable amount. Minimum <laughs> viable. Do he'd like that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is the actual core of uh, LibATA. Um, it does all the heavy lifting in the middle. <laughs> it's it's quite extensive. It is an extensive thing. Again, it's got all sorts of timers in there and things. It's, go wow, debounce timing. Yeah, does debounce timing. <laughs> Oh my God! Like this is all the stuff I would have had to implement if I did it from scratch. <laughs> Same there. Yeah, you got to remember that for somebody sometimes found it essential. And I, I turned off all the forcing. Like uh, on your on your current SSI SII ones, you have that force this, force that, right? Hmm. The libata also supports forcing if you think you know what you're doing. To force what? You can force, you just, it can go, uh, no, so your max speed is this, and you go, no, it isn't, it's this. Right? Or you can say, uh, you know, there was some kind of default in my drive. Well, my drive's perfect, I'm going to force it. <laughs> you think you know better, right? <laughs> Away you go. So I actually did not implement any forcing yet. That's like on the to do list, sort of, maybe. Depends if somebody comes up with a device that just won't work, but then I'll be like, well, buy one that does. You know? <laughs> so we don't have to do those silly little uh, A, G, F mm. patterns in the uh, U boot. This one's in the right Lib ATA just adapts. It adapts dynamically. Oh, I see. Okay, so I see where your uh, error handler actually works. And I think your code like, uh, attach. And then prints out all the supports the DRM. Yes. Uh, uh, Max and GMA, what number three? I don't know what that number is. Geometry stuff. Set features X from a. Well, there's uh, quite a bit of work this does. No work in should fun. Yay! Yay! <laughs> You're free! <laughs> free is the uh, the build, read, write, and TF. Oh, my favorite function. That actually does the real work of talking to the device with a command. Yay, NCQ. <laughs> NCQ is the simplest, and then everything else is more complicated, like LBA does that, CHS is another method. But it's all doing this without your knowledge. So it's trying to talk to your device using the most efficient way it can. So using what physical link layer protocols or something? Yeah, yeah, they're physical layers. C H S stands for cylinder head sectors. Okay. That's the oldest and dumbest way to talk to it, but it supports it. Actually, the Amiga is the first machine I've seen in a long time that still gives you the geometry in terms of cylinders. Well, it makes it up. Oh, it does. It's lying to you right now. Yeah. Okay. It does. It tells you the truth to a certain point, and then it just lies. Okay. Yeah. That's just to keep old software happy. Okay. Yeah. It's like 3390. All that stuff's allocated in cylinders. It 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 broke at uh, so many a terabyte or something. It starts lying to you. Can't remember where the threshold is. But it doesn't give me a negative number, right? No. Okay. That's yeah. It just starts making up stuff. Excellent. <laughs> Does the stuff even add up at least? Yeah, it adds up. It adds up. That's part of the Amiga glue code. <laughs> so if it, if it lies in a terabyte, what happens to three terabytes? Lies even more. If the, the lies, lies get bigger, the lies bigger, become, the larger your drive gets. The lies become <laughs> circular. It just keeps digging. So uh, I implemented this uh, this layer. This is this is the this is the brains of the operation that uh, talk to LibATA. So I had to do some bookkeeping to keep 
things sane on the Amiga side because uh, the VTA will let you do anything. I mean, it, it'll let you call commands in any order and all that, right? Well, I can't just allow anything. To so I had to put a whole bunch of support in to uh, <laughs> make sure the Amiga commands are translated and executed correctly for the VTA, right? It became involved. You wrote all this? Yes. Yes. These, these are simple. Okay. You know, nothing much, but it had to be done. Um, create the port. There's jumbo jumbo. Where's my font uh, again? There. Oops. Task entry. There, there's where the task actually starts. Grabs a signal. Interrupt. Does this. Does that. Item pool. Hey, item pool. Remember we talked about item pool? Yes. There's a port, timer port. There's a work item queue. I invented this concept of a work item queue so that I could serialize commands. Okay. Otherwise, they tended to get out of order and bad things happen. Um, which was the one that really needed that? Fast file system. Nope. NGFS. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it handled the uh, out of order, no problem, but FFS exploded. So it depended who was on the other end, what happened <laughs> with my commands. Um, I also had to make sure that uh, it, didn't, it never waited for anything. Like it never did a busy wait, I should say. Look at all those, uh, all those services. Service after service, completion, and this. It started small, and then it just grew. Ooh. It grew, and it grew, and it grew. Funny bit. Yeah, this stuff I should actually remove because this is the shutdown stuff, and I said, well, it's never going to shut down anyway. So I should just get rid of that junk. But at first, I let the task start and stop. Then I changed my mind later. <laughs> the interrupts. That was interesting. Forgot to mention the interrupts. I don't know what it is about Linux, but they run all sorts of things on an interrupt context. It's, it's madness what they do on an interrupt context. Oh, such as? And you wouldn't just, do it in the world. Just like hundreds and hundreds of lines of code in an interrupt context. I said, what are you doing all this stuff during an interrupt? Oh, okay. During. You shouldn't do anything more than No. Set of flag and RTI. I still don't understand that. If I find some Linux expert, explain explain why you would do hundreds and hundreds of things on a different context. That seems wrong. But that's the way they originally implemented it in the ATA. And I tried to do the same thing, and it, it, as you know, it failed. Because I had all sorts of freezes and funny business going on. Till Sebastian suggested I stop doing that. <laughs> and try it the other way, which is um, just don't acknowledge the interrupt until I'm done. Right? And right. Handle the interrupt on the task context. So interrupt happens. I signal the main task saying, hey, there's work to do. Don't acknowledge the interrupt. Wait. Wait for it. Wait for the task to schedule and then go. Right? <laughs> so my interrupt service routine is very, very short. And it signals the task. The task, the first thing it does is check interrupts. Oh, something to do. Runs. That runs at priority 10 or 15, I think. So pretty high. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like an interrupt. But it does it the Amiga way. Then it clears interrupt. So it's good for that. Right? And uh, nobody complained about speed. So I think it's okay. That yeah, speed's fine. Well, well, I mean, I mean it's comparable with, with the version before. Right? So, and this way is more Amiga friendly because everything runs on a task context, context right? instead of an interrupt context. That just bad things happen. <laughs> I had to do some tricks to make it work, but I got it to work. What is this uh, set of ports where you're freezing and thawing? And what is that? What's the context there? Yeah, yeah, it has this uh, concept of freezing a port and thawing a port. Is this a power saving thing? Or what was no, it's during error handling. An error happens, it'll freeze the port, saying no more 
transactions allowed until, until we handle this? this? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And as you know, errors happen quite often. They do. So, <clears throat> away we went. Oh, lovely. 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 All this stuff I kind of discovered as I recorded. This has been a real journey. Yeah. yeah. It has been, Tom. <laughs> it's been fun, but uh, there's my main routine. My main routine, most importantly, has a nice big weight. There you go. Check that mask. Hey! <laughs> He'd like the weight. No more busies. <laughs> you notice it doesn't freeze when there's an error. That's good. <laughs> And what I do is I DQ the top work item, then I handle the work item, and everything just flows, right? Work items get put on the queue and in order, so it's just a work queue. Item list, very simple. Uh, there's a break signal, error handling. If an error happens, I do this. So the force serialization in this context have any significant? We don't have that many devices, and we don't have a lot of stuff going on, so it probably doesn't, but do you think Force serialization has a non-negligible performance impact. I don't know yet. Uh, I ha you have to do the tapping devices in serial order. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Hard drives, you can, if with NCQ support, you can do throw whatever over gets reordered. Asynchronous. Anyway. Yes. And I wanted to turn that on, but I haven't been brave enough mm -hmm. yet because it can have what is it up to 15 outstanding transactions, I believe. Something like that. I have no idea. To go back and look. Here's 15. 15 or 30. Quite a few. Like each transaction could be quite large. Like uh, one read with DMA can do, ooh, is it like something megabytes of data? Okay. One command can do megabytes of data. No, we'll look it up now. But that's pretty significant, right? That's, that's a lot of data to on a PC. How could you get that out of order with something else? Like a seek, for instance. I mean, it, it, it mean if you do your seek and you read out of order, you're not going to read the right thing, right? No, no, you're not. <laughs> it's it's. Uh, but our our commands are chopped up. So when a command comes in from fast file system for a 10 gigabyte file. Mm. I have to chop that up into smaller sequences, and those ones I can run in parallel. Oh, okay. That's what I'm talking about. It's the right. store that ends up uh, forcing the sync, right? I and mean, that's how that works. Yeah. So when the stores come down, you can force the sync, but otherwise you can reorder it, fetch it however you like. Yes. Yes, I can do it out of order. And um, what was I just saying? The NCQ will let me do that. And I tried NCQ for a while, and I got confused because I left it on for a tappy device. I didn't know what happy was sequential only. <laughs> Why did that cause troubles? <laughs> Man, I hate those Atapi devices. <laughs> you, you remember I, I didn't support CDs for the longest time? Ooh. On the driver if you were on the beta list? Nope, hard drives only, hard drives only. Yep. Good reason. There's always a good reason. Just a massive amount of code. That's, oh. because, that's because we could all move from USB anyway. Yeah, yeah. Then, then uh, after I got CD working, they said, well, CD audio doesn't work. It's like, oh, gee. It's always another thing, right? <laughs> oh, I, I remember now. Fast file system and, and smart file system both ask for giant transactions sometimes. NGFS never does. It always asks for smaller transactions. Well, it's limited to uh, cluster size. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think if NGFS asked for larger transactions, somehow, it would be able to go faster. It's a theory. We'd have to test it because <laughs> you let the driver figure out the best way to do it, and if it has NCQ, it should maybe in theory be able to pull it off quicker. Okay, but, uh, I'll, but I'll put that question straight back to you then. It has to be tested. <laughs> if you did some caching in your drive, I wouldn't have to read a cluster. 
Yes. You have to limit my rates to a possible. That's right. Fit into the current cash cluster. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Or you could do prefetch or something. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so there's some room for improvement, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to play with it until it's stable, of course. But <laughs> another another nice I, um, avenue to explore. Let's see if we can tease some performance out of it, right? NCQ. <laughs> I do want to rewrite that. If, if, if we could get together to tease some performance improvement out of our combination, that would be at somebody else's expense. Right yes. Yes. Well. <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> we have to move on. <laughs> uh, what else is there? Oh, work items. There they are. Doing a slight adjustment. Disc changes. Disc changes were horrible to support. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Stuff I had to do. Hey, where is it? Read capacity, tree drive geometry, boring, boring. Uh, HD SCSI command. Here's another one. So I found out uh, sometimes Mega devices will send SCSI commands to hard drives expecting answers. Yeah, I'm like, what? There's only, well, how many are there? Uh, let's see here. Where's my hard drive? That's a tapping. There's. There was SCSI test unit ready, inquiry, and DA read capacity. And that's it. Three commands. If you don't implement those commands, bad things happen and users complain. They complain anyway. <laughs> You're just choosing the topic. <laughs> MGB won't run and you can't forward the drive. Yeah, people get upset. <laughs> and if it's their brand new hard drive, they just spent $100 on it. They can't even format it in yeah. MGB. Yeah. What the hell's going on? But if you have to do these three in Amiga land, otherwise it gets upset. And they're, they're lying too. It's like I'm taking this one and shoehorning it into that one. So, in the current version of MTB, I removed that those calls because the results weren't used. Oh! <laughs> and so I removed, Wrong answer. <laughs> I removed those calls unless it's a removable device. Ah, yes, that makes sense. So you it for a, yeah, a, I don't a, understand why they're going to hard drives. That's, mm, yeah. They're totally useless. But you see these things fly by and you think, oh, I need it. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't about to go into MTB and figure it out. No. And I already had the source code from um, some Stefan's code, so just adapted it. <laughs> Got it to work. Yes. Hello. Who, me? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> You're back, are you? Yes. Yeah, so I was just explaining there was three SCSI commands I had to support for hard drives. Okay. Those three, for some reason. And then Tony was just saying, uh, he doesn't think they're needed. <laughs> Essentially. Test unit ready inquiry and what is that, DA read capacity? Yeah. What does DA stand for? Good question. I don't know. Okay. You said DA is a direct something. Duh. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, right there. So what are you actually doing? Oh, right. Direct access. Direct access. Direct access. Mm -hmm. There you go. Ask the man. He knows way more about these drivers than I do. Next driver set. I'm more of a component bluer together kind of guy. <laughs> Hey, if the result works, is it? Always have been. Writing code from scratch, yeah, it's, it's okay, but I'd rather steal code. Oh. <laughs> maybe you can you can do deal with somebody else's mess. Maybe you could do the new replacement. <laughs> it's 
Spiggy, which was the evil. Sorry. <laughs> What's the legal status of this? Are you going to have to provide the full source for absolutely yeah, for, for anybody from the opposition who asks for it? Oh, I, yeah, right. Yeah, anybody who has a binary. Which is included on your Amigo SCE. Mm -hmm. So, perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. It's a chance to share your brilliance. Yes, it is. Brilliance. <laughs> so the world may know. <laughs> yeah. We need a new tagline. We do. That one's old. Yeah. <laughs> Change unit now. Yeah, that's not important. Get after me. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Remember I added a debug tool? Kind of, oh, you did. A dynamic debug tool? No, no, I, uh, I added it. These commands here, get attributes, set attributes, I called them. Simple little, whoops, that's not it. Here it is. These two guys. I needed a way to set the debug level on the fly, right? any time, run time, so that I could set the debug level, run my crazy operation, and turn it off and collect the log, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I invented a new command called SATA control. You uh, distributed that actually with a few people. Yes, it's, it's included in the archive. Is it? Yeah, it installed into your WordPress C directory. Oh, nice, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, should have been. Yeah. Um, it's, right now it just does debug levels. What I want to do is extend it a lot farther to report back how many times it used the bounce buffer metrics. Right? So you can find out which which of your software is not working the way it should. Because right? one thing I did the first time is I didn't implement any bounce buffers because NGFS was doing things properly and aligning the buffers correctly. So I didn't have any need for these silly bounce buffers. So I had to put the bounce buffers in and make, make them happy. <laughs> Be minimally viable. <laughs> but, um... You never yield that down. <laughs> he started it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the meme of the show. Yeah, well, well it's water. better than some of our... Um, ones from the past. We've had, what is it? <laughs> You're not on the list. Uh, that's what she said. That, that's not oh. what you said last <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yeah. quite like that one. That was, that, it was completely pointless but hilarious. Yes. Primarily because Trev just got things that was so funny. It's like he just kept using it. <laughs> the twerking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's an image I'll never quite get out of my head. <laughs> There's a little command I whipped up just to turn debug on and off anyway. Nothing, nothing fancy. It could become something fancy. But not right. <laughs> you know IDE tool, right? All its options. IDL, I know ID. IDE to it, sir. Wrong. It has a gazillion things mm -hmm. it can do. There's lots of nice info. These are all the false things you have to get. Yeah. Yeah, you can force it to go into certain modes to put drive unit into transfer mode, blah, right? Well, we used to have to on, uh, like on the SAM in the earlier days, because mm -hmm. it just it would just assume everything was PIO for some reason. You could see right. query geometry. It's almost like they ran into exactly the same problems I did. Who wrote this? This is uh, Stefan. Yeah. Is he still active? No. That's a shame. He's available in a consulting role. <laughs> still highly valuable that way. Well, knows everything about this stuff. So. Hey, yes, SG. Yes. Or SG2. 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 SG squared. Yep. <laughs> yep. Do not use this tool except if you really know what you are doing. 
So I'm going to have to put a similar warning. <laughs> you always ignore it anyway. Yeah. I hope you'll use the word unless instead of except if. Yes. <laughs> it it will be grammar checked by Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, some, some people can stand bad, bad grammar more than others. <laughs> it depends on the person. <laughs> but uh, that, that was a tool I wrote uh, just recently. So I, I do want to gather statistics, or metrics as I call them, uh, to figure out how the performance of the driver is, how the drivers perform. Uh, it's interesting to know how many times workarounds are hit, because I mm -hmm. like to know that. Or how many times I'm given a uh, command I threw away. You know, count that. Right? Note it. Not do anything about it. Just note it. Interesting fact. The Amiga OS sends a lot of zero length requests to drivers. Why? Is it just a query or just to see if it's so no, live? No, or? I think it's just laziness. But from when? But what would be the read, point? Read, read yeah. Request. Yeah, read write request with zero length. Really? Yeah. Well, how long? How long has it been doing it? Forever. <laughs> so it's from the original writer? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's software out there. It's applications. Maybe Media Toolbox, Partition Wizard, Play CD, whatever it is. Will suddenly send a zero length request. What? Why are you bothering me? <laughs> so. <laughs> I have to look into that. Very odd. Yeah, so I want to kind of record who did it, why, uh, who did it, how many times, you know, so I can make a little histogram maybe or something. Kind of the, you know, the sort of name and shame page. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and I'll post it on the internet. Yeah. And I'll point. <laughs> <laughs> you did this twice. There is value in shaming. It's a <laughs> There's one. See, look at this. Uh, I had to put a special if in there. This is from Stefan's original driver too. He had to put one in. If I O length equals zero, just say it was fine. I don't know why I'm getting it though. <laughs> and how often do you see that? Surprisingly <laughs> often. Really? Yeah. <coughs> when I when I put a little debug in there, it's like, dick, 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 dick. now it's turned off that's normally. In, that's in your main context, isn't it? Long, yes. Long colon. Yeah. So you have to do a bit of searching to find out who it was. Yes. I have to I have to record it at the beginning and, yeah. or I have to just check it at the very beginning. Maybe I'll put it in device level. Just tattle on in there. Yeah. For now I just put it there. It's in yes. a book on somewhere. Yeah. In the message. Yeah. 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 It is. Oh, there's your turn H D D led on. There you go. Oh, Yay. <laughs> See, the trick is not turning it on, it's turning it off. Mm -hmm. That's the part you couldn't figure out. <laughs> well, not easily, because it's not obvious from the code. It's asynchronous. <laughs> you dispatch the command and then, uh-oh, when does it come back? <laughs> that was the tricky part, yeah. yeah. I realized that. Now, I knew where to put it, but other people would have a little trouble finding it at first. So there's my issue command. Uh, what else did I? Oh, read write 64. That's good. SCSI issue command. It's much more involved. Oh, I had to do segmentation and reassembly. Oh, because, like I said, you get these 10 megabyte requests from the FAPS file system, and it's expecting you to do it. <laughs> like, what? 10 megabyte? Okay. I was surprised. I, I didn't think a file system would do that, but then then I discovered NCQ, and it's like, oh, you know, maybe it's not so bad because I could use NCQ to break it up into multiple commands and do it in one jump. Maybe it'll be faster. Because right now I do it serially. I, if I get a 10 megabyte command, I do one command for the first chunk, then another command, then another, then another, till I get the 10 megs, right? But this. Uh, Q, I could do it all in parallel. Right. 
that could be useful. <laughs> that's that's what I'm thinking. Will it give a performance increase though? Me. <laughs> Somewhere, though, you have to specify your maximum uh, command length. Yes, and that's, that's specified by the hardware. The hardware knows the maximum command size, oh, right. not the file system, unless you communicate it. Well, it's in the uh, index, the, the, the DOS index that the file system gets when it starts up. Ah, uh, see, I could, I could provide it per device. I could say this device can do this. Size of files. And you get it too. And yeah. It. I, I, I get it from DOS, but, it's, yeah. but, but if I ask you, is to get the same data. Yes. Yes. Now the question, would, would, would it be worth that trouble? We don't know yet. Right? We could try it. So <laughs> you see, uh, you might be able to get some performance out of it. So uh, what I want to do is find a way to measure the current performance and then change and then measure the difference and see if it says 1% or wow, well, that was a lot of bother. You need a reproducible. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, cause there's a well, how do you want us to respond to you to, if we don't have a, a tool to give you? We need a testing tool. <coughs> yeah. 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 We need a developer to do that. And things like disk <laughs> speed and so forth tend to stress the file system just as much as they tend to the software. Mm. See, I want to see um, a test tool on the DOS level, not the driver level. We kind of assume the driver is doing what it should do. Now we could do a driver level test too, but I'll, that generally destroys whatever's on there. Unless it's a read-only test, right? I, I mean, I was always using disk speed. Yes. But I don't know how useful that is. Well, it it seems good. It's better than nothing. And I have a version of disk speed that works at the driver level, where it does direct commands. Not heard of that. That's not SCSI speed, right? No. It's it's you take disk speed, remove a layer, and just do the direct commands and measure those. But I thought you didn't want it at that level. No, uh, you kinda do and you don't. Well, It'd be nice to have both, right? Okay. You need a sacrificial drive. <laughs> I think you prepared to reformat off. Yep, because you're gonna kill it. <laughs> Gonna write patterns on there and read them back, you know that kind of thing. Well, I keep a drive that I keep adding and removing, adding and removing all the time for the next level of CD. Yeah. So I'm always erasing and reformatting that last drive. Uh, so I could use that to give you information, and so I'm not worried about that. Uh, it's not sacrificial that it won't kill it. Kill it. Yeah. No, I won't physically damage it. Yeah. Just, just kill whatever data is. Right. And the, yeah. and the only data is is the is the main. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the main CD and to see if it's working yeah. at the normal level. And you wonder if flash devices behave differently too. Flash drives versus physical mechanical drives. They're and slower. They have those hybrid drives. Well, we know they're, they're different, they're slower. Right? Well, yeah. we'll see. We'll have to measure, right? <laughs> <coughs> they feel slow. Yes, yes. I want to I wanna know on, on a DOS layer how much slower it is and faster it is. Using the NCQs versus not. So we need a, we, yeah. we need a, a, a sacrificial so, uh, USB too. So one command I'm going to add is uh, NCQ on and off on my SATA control. Right. Mm -hmm. So NCQ enabled. Test NCQ off. Test. Give me results. There you go. Now we're done. Right. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't take very long. No. 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 SATA control there. It's it's much faster. Yeah. Instead of me giving you one load. Another load. You got to put in the kick layout. You got to worry about messing things up. I'm willing if you send me something. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's not hard to change. It's in that one loop I have there. And it only has to be a, it only has to be a sacrificial partition, not whole product. That's true. It depends on where we write. <laughs> well, we're gonna pick numbers. <laughs> well, choose, choose numbers and just hammer whatever. We don't have to do the whole list. No. If you want to, maybe you don't. <laughs> it becomes a, a test designer's dream. <laughs> Something for Paul to do. Not me. Paul can do it. He can do anything. <laughs> I'm not denying it, I like it. <laughs> 
that, see, so say to part, that's all the glue code, this is all glue. Right, to get it to talk to live ATA. So that, it's not too bad. Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> oh, the things. No, I'm still in the process of cleaning up the code for uh, public release. A random insult. And I have all sorts of features I need to implement in there. Still, to this day, right? all sorts of things. Uh, what else did you, what would you like to look at? Probably the status at FSL file. Oh yeah, actually I would, because uh, I'm always fascinated by some of the stuff that they have in the stuff from the uh, Freescale Boys. They, they've got registers uh, and tunables and fun things in there. Oh. Drivers. Ah, uh, yes. So these are those templates I was talking about. So this is you can see the authors up here, Yi Yang, copyright, free scale, semiconductor, usual stuff. Yep. Okay. Then you have little templates for commands. Because what you're doing is you're, you're hammering, hammering registers, you're hammering RAM. Put these commands in there and say go. That's how this works. So if I wanted to do a read, I go stick this command in this piece of RAM and say go. The way it goes. That's that's the interface. Kind of interesting. Suppose it's standard. I don't I don't know if this is normal for these devices or not. That's what they did. Makes sense. IRQ coalescing. Feature. They were trying to reduce the number of interrupts that happen. Coalesce your interrupts. Mm -hmm. You can do that. It's a nice feature. <laughs> Set up command header entry. So it doesn't do a lot. Oh, I, I, that's what I need to do right now. It probably is very inefficient. There's a lot of little Indian dancing going on. Because for some reason, some of these. Interfaces are a little in it, whatever reason. Uh, so I wrote or stole a swap 32 that does it the hard way. It doesn't do it the mnemonic way. I, I think there's a command or mnemonic that okay. do it in power PC land. Or it says, I, I have actually, I don't know. I've never heard of that. Yeah, but I'm I've, seen, I've seen some in it. I'm sure, I'm sure there is. Oh, okay. okay. That does it in hardware. So I just do. White swap this. Done. Ooh. Now these these are executed all the time. Every single command that goes issued to the uh, device. Fills scatter gather. Another place I should uh, play a little better. Anyway. <laughs> At least it does DMA. Actually, I kept getting that question. Is uh, does your driver do DMA? Well, when you say do DMA, that's yeah. that, that's a that's a very broad question. Yeah, that's like, not. What they mean is it's not using PIO and it's polling. I know what they they mean, but it's like this chip only does DMA. There is no other way to talk to it. Oh, there's not. There's no, no hold IO. No, not at all. So it's DMA or the highway. So. <laughs> Just stop. So. I keep getting that question. <laughs> How could it not, right? <laughs> well, your answer is I had no choice. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have made it slow. <laughs> Wait for 4.2. Yeah. <laughs> QC prep. Yeah, all this wonderful stuff. So I tried to keep these commands in beta. They're direct copy. You see issue, issues a command. Uh, there's your your register write and your register read. This is direct copy? Direct copy of the Linux source code. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's what I mean. 
I did not change it, didn't have to in the end. I did it first and then I started backing off, and undoing amigatized stuff, and making it more uh, generic. You know what I'd really love to be able to do? I'd really, because each, each one of these little controllers has a base address, right? And then you've got an offset for the registers on those controllers. Exactly. I would really love to write a utility that would let me, um, just from the Amiga command line, read uh, register contents. Yeah. Uh, because. I thought IDE tool did that. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm saying arbitrarily, right? Like, I specify the unit, I specify the base address, I specify the offset, and I specify the target. Oh, you can do that now. now. Oh, do you have something? Because I mean, I have a, I'd have to write it. I thought you, you can read any address in the whole entire map. Right now on Amiga, right? Yeah, no, I'm not talking about memory mapped registers. I'm talking about uh, hardware, actual regist registers. Or those. Yeah, you can read them. You can do that. Some yes. of them have uh, protocols, so that you're not allowed to read them unless you do this, dance. Well, I want to. I want to look at the. I, I want to look at the memory control setup because I'm convinced there's some stuff that can do there. Well. It, I, I would guess that you have to take it into some mode and then read them out and then get out of that mode. But I haven't looked at the mode. Well, I only looked at the SATA <laughs> section of the data sheet. We're always running in supervisor mode anyway, are we? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think. Well, switching to supervisor is not hard. It's just one function call. Yeah. No, but I mean in uh, in Amiga land, I think are yeah. we always the supervisor? It flips. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It does. And then there's freeze, thaw, yeah. PMP, oh, it's a port, port, port multiplier. Yeah, yeah. That was one thing that the ATA assumed PMP support, and I kind of been ignoring it, ignoring it. Then in the end, I finally implemented it, that one release. Okay, I'm putting it all back in. Do you have one? Yes, I bought one. Does it work? Uh, I don't know. I haven't plugged it in. <laughs> That's the trouble. It's an honest answer. <laughs> I got diverted. Trevor's fault. He wanted me to fix graphics like <laughs> Really? <laughs> that was the day I got the card. <laughs> it's like, oh, I get to do oh. it. <laughs> Time is limited, so I have to choose. <laughs> it was funny. I bought it through um, eBay, actually. Found a Canadian that was selling them. Because they wanted some ridiculous amount of money for them. Uh, 120 bucks. What? Yeah. From Star Tech or whatever. Those things are really cheap. Well, Star Trek or, or, or Star were really Star cheap. Stuff and I cheap. Thought, well, I could find it cheaper, and I did. Yeah. So Star Trek. Any, Google them anywhere. They're they're sold. I wanted to just go pick one up that day, but the local suppliers didn't have any in stock. So, oh well. I don't know who Star Tech is or what they are, but the, their name is all over the place. They've got all sorts of wonderful, they have amazing, generic, strange things. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I yeah. this thing, right? The USB in here is a StarTech card. What do they call it? They, their slogan is the heart of hard to find made easy or something like that. Is it really? Yeah. Go to their website. That's a good, that's a good slogan. Yeah. Like they support old standards of old connectors. No problem. No. Port start. Yeah, look at all the stuff you got to do to start a port. <laughs> a lot of junk. You see here I gift up it, right? If zero, here's the old one. Here's my version. In theory, they should be equivalent. <laughs> I'm just saying, it doesn't seem like low physical addresses. This was interesting. Sebastian uh, added something about the uh, X5000. There's something funny going on, he said. What? Maybe it has something to do with the memory controller. I don't know. It just, I don't know. He said there's something funny. So what does he say here? M making the memory actually larger than necessary seems to shift it upward. What is it? What is it? It's not the what memory problem? So the address didn't look right to <laughs> No, he says this is not the something, I can't read what that is, something memory problem that we had before. This is hopefully on the, where are you? Uh, this is not the VGA memory problem. That VGA we had memory problem? Right? Yeah, VGA. What? Question. So there's something not quite right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know. I have to ask Sebastian. He added that change. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys get the I/O device map from firmware, though, right? You just pick it right up. Yep. Yeah. 
So why should I have to move it? Doesn't make sense, right? Mm -mm. Mm. I don't know. That cash clear E thing, that he had a debug statement for that. And so if you, you see that like all the time. Certain versions of it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely this one or something. <laughs> what is this cache clear? Is this an actual cache flush? What, what, what is it? Yes. Okay. Yes. What I'm doing is setting cache inhibit and guarded on that piece of RAM. This has to be. This is where I'm doing my commands. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it, it works. See, there it switches to super, byte, super state and back again. So you can flip flop. So you should be able to read the registers direct. Just look in the data sheet, find the address. Yeah, I mean I've done that. I, I just wanted. Yeah. I don't know if there's some sort of magic or something. I don't know. We could write it. See what happens. I, I, I'd like <laughs> to that no, because there's there's a bunch of things that are on various controllers I want to go look at. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Why not? I'm gonna be able to do it from the command line. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how, else am I to, how else are you supposed to do it? As force? Ask for a GUI. Why would, want, why would you want a GUI? That doesn't make any sense. There's ports. That's why it's all a game. Classify, hard reset. Oh, that was fun. Forgot about the resets. Soft reset and hard reset. Is this uh, of the controller? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it gets into an error state or something? What like a force complex reset. piece of work. Boy, this is that air handling again. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't believe how complicated it is. The Phi. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, that's diggy 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 Just a hard reset. And then there's a soft reset version that does this and 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 this Easy. <laughs> Do we hit error cases <laughs> on a regular basis that require a control reset? reset? Actually, every time you reboot, it has to do that. Okay. Every time you plug in a new device, it has to reset. And it does this reset sequencing. I mean, I can understand well. how you like the command cues or something would have to be cleared out. Or, but. That was the easy part of it. Okay. It does a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay. Then there's this uh, link power man management module as well, where your link physical link could go into power management mode, and you have to wake it up, and then you've got to do this. Okay. Do if you don't wake it up, it'll stay sleeping. And so there's a little protocol. Does it just drop the requests on the floor? If you yeah. Know, okay. Stuff like that. Yeah. So all these complexities that it does for me. So <laughs> I've, I've been implementing link power management now too. That was another thing I commented out the first time. <coughs> Everything's full power all the time. Yeah. Yeah. More power. <laughs> <laughs> FSL error interrupt. Yeah, yeah, there's interrupt. Every interrupt did this. <laughs> Post interrupt, do this. Yeah, so it's been fun, see? Lots and lots of code. And that all runs in interrupt context, does it? Yep. I used to get these spurious interrupts until I fixed the way it handles them. Now they went away. So I must have done something. Yes. There's a spin lock in there, even. Very, very useful. The common mode. <laughs> init controller. That was the first function I, I did, actually, was init controller. I didn't even do probe first, because how can you probe unless you initialize the controller? That doesn't come from the FSL guys? Yeah, this is the, they gave it to us. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't do much, just some register, this and that. Hope, 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 read this. But I didn't have to figure it out. So, <laughs> you know, instead of following the data sheet, it's already done. Then you get to the templates. That's fun. Little, little templates of uh, function pointers. You know, defer, prep, issue, this, do that, do that. And I have my own special freeze and thaw I do. <laughs> PMP, this, do that. So you have to figure all this stuff out. But it, it wasn't too awful, it was just strange. Strange. If you haven't done it before. It seems an awful lot of code to have to walk through. 
Yeah, not too bad. Though. Well, that's why they pay you the big bucks. That doesn't work. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an amazing amount of code just to get some data off a of disk. <laughs> I put it back. Oh, I did read first. Yeah. Remember, I think I set the read out first. Then when I set the write out, I put warning, warning, may destroy the world. <laughs> That's a fine looking clock. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think they may be on sale later. Yeah. <laughs> for a special show price. Special show price. <laughs> for you, my friend, special price. <laughs> <laughs> special Amy <laughs> <Penny> West. Please. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Now, how oh, price? Really? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, clock, a real clock. <laughs> it's, it's a nice looking clock. Skinnable. Yeah. Yeah. It, it hasn't done anything evil, which is way better than that other limpid clock did. That thing did evil That thing things. was awful, and the refresh was... This one doesn't do evil things. I don't know why. But this one works. The other one doesn't work. Well, I shouldn't say the limpid clock was awful. That was, that was strong. It's I, ticking away. It was it was a fine clock, but it, it yeah, had but a weird refresh. Strange things, things happened. It, it, it did it. kind of funky. So I, I just backs. dropped it. Ah. This one hasn't done anything strange to me. So far, so good. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. Thoroughly tested. That's why. Fall. I didn't realize that it was it was a clock. Yeah, it's only when I look hard can I see anything resembling the end. Well, yeah, there's, there's, there's different, different skins. The different, yeah, you can do skins and things. Yeah. There's all sorts of magic. Colors as well. Yeah, I just did the yeah, default. Did the default. Yeah. default. It's an amazing default. thing how like a tiny little mm -hmm. utility like that I don't know how is wow. just so nice. Those are all the skins? Yeah. Those are just backgrounds. Or that. And that's what I was thinking. The machine will like that. You set the clock to some hippie clock. Dude! You know that's a little easier to read. You can make it bigger. This is set to be twice as big or something. Yeah, you turn it to the skin. Yeah, essentially set to the. Well, there's anti aliasing. Order. Change skin. Yeah, press parent. Oh, right. You see, there's a... Oh! Yeah, go big. There we go. Go big or go home. Red rocket. I think that's... Oh. Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> that looks like a clock. That's a clock! Now that's a clock. There you go. How's that? <laughs> Better? That's a much more <laughs> See, I haven't played with this very much. <laughs> now it's too big and in the way. <laughs> Always a complaint. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize it had so many skins. I chose the one. I chose the 128 version, so it wasn't so big. This was an excellent presentation. Thank you very much. I think we're. We went past five. We went past six. You're going to throw. You're going to throw. Andy in there too. He loves it as well. Oh God, yeah. Have you not had a chance to play around with that enhancer tool? Oh, look. No. They're, all really, they're all really small, but... What time is it in Canada? It's here at 6.05. Is it 6.05? Right? Oh, my goodness. Calvary's my kids have already gone to that. Yeah, way gone. Hopefully. No, Samuel... It's, there's the official bedtime, and then there's, there's, there's the third is all just 45 minutes of I can't fall asleep, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, there's an itch, what is that sound outside, I had a, I fell asleep and had a nightmare, he did not fall asleep. Oh, was that a dog? Yeah. was always something. Uh, and the RN comes in at some point. Why is my system. hand so big? RN, 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 No, I can't fall asleep. I can't fall asleep. Well, well, what do you want? I don't know. I can't fall asleep. RN, go back. But I can't fall asleep. RN, do you want to get into the bed? And then everything that gets added gets put to this one. Why can't they just say it? Why does it have to be this long process? You should be used to protocols. <laughs> just like, can we just, where is the chase and how can I cut to it, right? Just, 
What do you want? <laughs> There's no shortcut it'll be for you. <laughs> so when you install multi view, do you, when it says, oh, do you want to delete all the instances of multi view so, uh, system, do you run that? Yeah. Can we wrap it up there for tonight? Sounds like what I did. Yeah, yeah, that was set. And this, everything I was hoping this for. My work good, good. We could go more. So then they but I, I did cover well, the all just some just some points. Points. You did. And, and at some, some point, I really want to go look through the, the practice okay. for uh, uh, Autodoc, and I want to go back and review some of the exec I/O style as well. Yes. yes. Whatever. It's an information. I didn't look at the uh, uh, that part of it. Whatever I want to make. Because if you go into devices, but I've been really using multi-page or folder page. Yeah, there it's handy. Yeah, there, there's an interesting article in the track. Austin, you look at a number of them. I've um, multi I have modified this one with large files. Where this change of this is this the part I added. Yes. So it turns out if you want to do this change of events, there's only one way. It's like this is from Olaf. It's like so you know it's correct. You know it's right. Yep. Clipboard history. This is how you really do it. And I follow yeah, this. this. I don't think I have this in my copy, do I? I've seen oh, sorry. This is more newish. Copy another text. Copy another text. Copy another text. Copy another text. So the only way that it will ever work. You go paste it. Complete. See. Oh, no, I do have it. Page 626. Good, good, good. Click through your Yeah, it does. If you prefer you like to read us, Say you like reading for the evening. Love the skeleton. Right. Well, you can double click. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
crazy. Mind you, you can also um, use a file system um, to, 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 to so demand. In the Linux volume. world, everything is uh, SCSI, and here everything is a, a floppy drive. Building. Sir, you can also use a file system command to mark the volume as right uh, as Okay. You can send Looks like it's repeated. You're removing one point to the other article. So I'm bothered apparently. So much to do. Commands for low level access. Here we go. Reading raw. 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 So you can do that with this driver too. You can read direct and skip file systems. Right? You're allowed. Go ahead. <laughs> does raw disk still work in OS 4? Should. What does it do? It's, it's like DD this? is for... Uh, uh, oh, it's like DD? Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. But it, it only works on a DOS uh, device volume thing. Oh, okay. So it doesn't work, it doesn't work at a... Uh, yeah, yeah, volume. Volume. Okay. Yeah. And, and if, if it just didn't work. Didn't you say you got an error minus 20? Somebody? I didn't. TDR not specified as 20 in traffic testing. I like that. Like that. Plus yeah, but what if they just throw a negative on top? Yeah. Huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, they won't stop now. Maybe. We got them going. <laughs> it's like an I390 impossible error. There's some source code. Only one per customer. One what? Both disks are in drives on the system at the same time. Ah, there you go. If both disks are in the drive system at the same time, that's what we just talked about. Right. If you do a raw copy, they'll both have the same, the same time stamp or whatever it is. And then, yeah, it'll explode. Good way to kill an Amiga. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> There's lots of good ways to kill an Amiga. But yeah. Should we, should we update your browser at some point? That You realize how this thing is like... Uh, Five years old. I'm busy. Don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use your Amiga for much more than just coding, or is it pretty much just coding these days? Coding, playing games. Games? Yeah. Play games. Well, a couple down there. Like Mace, Gorky. Anything in Amy Store. Arn loves <laughs> Mace. Like he absolutely loves it. Yeah. He just. Uh, Swamp Defense too. That's addictive. Yeah. I'm in the top ten now. Are you really? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Well, I never go online. I never do the Amiboy online. I've been doing the online thing now. I never do I that. I love that now. You know, at first I didn't like it. It's like a competitive thing. And then it's like, that guy beat me. I, must I don't know who it is, but... I must, I must beat him. I must beat <laughs> I shall have my vengeance. And then I thought, uh, why are we putting Amy Boy into the OS as a service? Why don't we put Amy Store into the OS as a service? Well, I know the answer to that one. But I want to know. And Amy Boy. <laughs> if there was a competitor, I could understand why there would be hesitation, but there isn't one. I know. So what's the problem? Oh, wait. There is a competitor. There is. Oh, there isn't. Indiegogo. Oh, that's that. Pascal. <laughs> that, uh, Pascal has three customers. Oh, wait, there's also Jack. And that's not a store. <laughs> that's just an OS4 depot browser thing. <laughs> Robert, you're not recording this, right? Yes, I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys keep talking, I keep recording. <laughs> no, you don't. All right, you I'm going to demand some right. censorship here. He warned you this morning. Huh? He warned you this morning that everything you said was being taken down. It's like being in North Korea. <laughs> no one's going to actually going to watch this whole thing and go all the way to the end of it. You want to bet? You want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Watch it. Hours. Somebody, six, somebody, somebody, 52. One person will watch it and find something offensive or wrong. Shall we, shall we officially ask Robert to stop recording now? Or we can just... Oh, you're done. We're done, Rod. Robert. All right.